Jinder Mahal. Hey, how you doing, my friend? Good, I'll see you having me on your show. How you doing, Angelina? Wonderful, how are you? Kitty. Oh my god. The cleaner! To this week's Impact Wrestling Media Teleconference. As we head into one of the biggest wrestling weekends of the year, WrestleCon down in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, Josh is not going to be with us this week, so I will uh, give you a quick little news update. Of course, we got Friday night action, Impact Wrestling versus Lucha Underground, shaping up truly to be a, a fan's dream night with some incredible matches. You, of course, have LAX defending the Tag Team Championships against Killshot and the Mac. Eddie Edwards looking uh, for a little revenge against Sammy Callahan's alter ego, Jeremiah Crane. You have the main event with Impact World Champion Austin Aries teaming with Phoenix against Alberto El Patron and Pentagon Jr. Many other Impact stars will be down in New Orleans in action. Allie, Matt Seidel, Brian Cage, Trevor Lee, and of course, Big Papa Pump, Scott Steiner. Uh, media, don't forget, before the action starts in New Orleans, there is a press conference at 4.30 local time, 4.30 Friday, at the Royal St. Charles Hotel. And yes, the public is invited to see and hear from the competitors in the Redemption main event, which uh, Redemption pay-per-view is Sunday night, April 22nd in Orlando. So I'm talking about the world champion. Austin Aries puts the title on the line against the former champion, Alberto El Patron. So uh, speaking on behalf of everyone at Impact Wrestling, travel safe, and we look forward to seeing you in New Orleans. Now that we got that business out of the way, let's, uh, let's welcome in our, our – uh, let me do something on the computer here. Welcome in our special guest, of course, Eli Drake is a former world champion who is uh, positioned for a shot at the World Tag Team Championships thanks to his Feast or Fired briefcase. However – uh, I don't want to say Eli has no friends. Eli has no interest in a tag team championship. He wants world championship gold, and somehow he's convinced Moose that this Thursday, tomorrow night on Impact, it's case versus case, Eli against Moose. <coughs> Someone is waking up Friday morning with two cases in their hands and uh, two title shots. Eli, this certainly should be a very interesting few days for you. Well, it certainly should be. I guess we'll see what happens on uh, Thursday night, right? You got it. How are how are things for Eli Drake these days? Everything's pretty good, right? I'm sitting here with the tag team title shot, all that stuff. Uh, you know, just doing my thing, looking at right, that world title case. Your your thoughts heading down to New Orleans for WrestleCon? Uh, well, it'll be, it'll be my first time in New Orleans ever, uh, so uh, I'm looking forward to that portion of it. Um, also, just, uh, you know, we kind of work in front of that WrestleCon crowd. I always like to go out and meet the people, uh, so it's going to be a good time. All right, media, we will, at this point, open up for questions for Eli. As always, I ask you to uh, please identify yourself, your media outlet, and one question only so we can get through uh, all the questions we have for Eli. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Good evening, Eli. It's Adam from the Impact Lounge. How are you this evening? Oh, uh, you know what? Hello? Adam, hold on one second. I got to turn uh, Eli's phone on. That's my mistake. <laughs> Eli, go ahead. That was my mistake. Well, maybe we can figure this thing out. But uh, good evening to you. It's morning where I am right now. But uh, uh, everything is great, man. What's going on with you? Yeah, it's all good. And uh, I just really wanted to follow up on on an interview that you did with ourselves about a month and a half ago. Uh, you very kindly gave us some time and. Uh, one of the questions that was picked up by a lot of the media outlets that we asked and talked about was, was your contract status. You mentioned the end of May uh, or something along those lines. Can you give us an update on, on anything? Are you uh, Any news for us on that front? Uh, the only news is that there is no news. There's no, uh, no ink to any paper at this moment. Thank you. 
Hope you stay. Hi there, it's, uh, Josh at Vault Town. How are you doing? All right. All right, man. What's going on with you? Yeah, not much, not much. Just uh, you know, chilling as it is. Um, so, what it is? Um, I know that Impact's made a monumental state in saying that you're returning to the UK in September. Um, what are your thoughts regarding the event? And is there anyone on the current UK independent scene that you'd like to face at the event? Man, I got to tell you, going to the UK back in 2016. Uh, just an amazing experience. I mean, the way that the fans, uh, it, there's such a passion over there in the UK, actually. Like, just noticing all the people who showed up um, <clears throat> simply to watch our tour bus show up, to watch our tour bus leave. Uh, you know, people showing up at the hotel for autographs and pictures and stuff like that. Uh, that's a lot of passion. I like that. Uh, so I'm very much looking forward to that. As far as the UK indie scene, man, I'm so... What I do, I've got blinders to the point where, like, I barely even know people in the U.S. indie scene, let alone UK. <laughs> yeah. Well, if I can give you a recommendation, look for Chris Brooks. He'll, uh, he'll give you a good match. <laughs> Chris Brooks. All right, then. I'll keep an eye Chris on Chris Brooks, DCK. Yeah, give him a look. <laughs> yeah, all right. Lovely. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Yeah, man. Uh, hi, this is Shireen from Sports Kira. How are you, Eli? What's going on, man? I think I've talked to you guys before, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, you have. So, um, for my first yeah, question, I'd like to ask you... <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, for my first question, I'd like to ask you, Eli, you're one of the best promos in the industry today. And you're often compared to The Rock. Well, how does that make you feel? Well, I mean, there's mixed feelings about that. I, uh, Of course, that's a huge compliment in a lot of ways. Uh, and let me correct you on something. I am the best mic man in the entire business right now, not one of, because uh, nobody can touch me, let's be honest. Uh, and there's no scripts. There's no none of that crap going on when I'm out there talking. This is all coming from my goofy-ass brain. Uh, but the bottom line is, uh, you know, look, that, that's a great comparison because if I'm being compared to potentially one of, if not the greatest, uh, stick man of all time, uh, then I, I can't argue with that. But, you know, sometimes you hear people say that, you know, I've heard people say that, you know, you're doing an imitation of Ric Flair, you're doing an imitation of The Rock, you're doing an imitation. I've heard so many different guys that come out of left field that I, I can't even wrap my brain around. Um, so, you know, there's a little bit of mixed emotion about that. But for the most part, I try not to listen to most of it because most of it's uh, social media crap and I try not to pay attention to that. Uh, and at this point, it's just kind of, you know, I, I do what I do, and what I do, yeah, there's a little bit of influence from uh, Stone Cold, The Rock, hell, there's even a little influence from Hogan, Flair, all those guys, a little bit of influence from Jake the Snake, so, um, yeah, I, I'll accept that comparison. All right, thank you. Hi, Eli, this is Raj Gary with Wrestling Inc., how are you? What's up, man? Uh, not much. I was curious, just with the big week ahead, uh, what all do you got lined up? I know you're going to be at the Impact versus Lucha Underground card on on uh, this week. Uh, do you know what you'll be doing on that? Well, hell, Impact gave me this whole long uh, schedule just a couple of days ago. I got uh, I'm going to be working out live on Twitch at 8 a.m. on Friday. Uh, of course, I'll be at the WrestleCon uh, signing autographs, taking pictures. I think 10 to 4, uh, somewhere in that range uh, on Friday, and then of course we have the show there that night, Friday. Um, I think that's at 10 o'clock, right, Ross? Correct. Uh, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock local time. Gotcha. And then uh, other than that, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of free to roam. I think other than Sunday, I think I'm doing something on Twitch again. I think it's called You've Got Game or something like that. So I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that is, but I guess we're all going to find out together. Do you, do you got a match lined up on Friday night? I'm sorry, say it again. Uh, do you have a match lined up on Friday night? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, no, actually, I don't. I, I don't know exactly what I'm doing. I know I'm part of the show. I know I'll be there. Uh, I don't know in what capacity, and I don't know what I'm doing or who I'm wrestling if I am wrestling. All right. Well, great. Uh, well, thank we'll you. Eli, you mentioned the You Got Game or You've Got Game uh, segment that you're going to do this weekend. as a kind of a perfect segue. Uh, Two-part question we had for you. 
which I actually did wish, witness uh, both of them in in Ottawa during Bound for Glory time. You kicked what was it a forty nine or a fifty one yard field goal in dress shoes, and then the second part of the question was how do you plan to defend your mini golf championship in April uh, April twenty third in, in Orlando. Is that a thing, or am I defending my mini golf championship? I didn't even know. You, you are. It, it, was, it will news. be uh, Monday, uh, the twenty third. Okay, so I've got, I got uh, <laughs> I got my mini golf championship on the line. Um, well, I mean, look, I'm going to go in the same way I did last time, which is absolutely 100 percent no plan whatsoever, uh, and just being as good as I am. Uh, other than that. I, I forget what the whole other beginning part was, but uh, hell yeah, I kicked a hell of a field goal in some dress shoes in Canada. And uh, any other time, tell you what, Ottawa Red, Red Black, give me a call. I'll come in and kick field goals any day. All righty. Hi, you know, it's uh, Rory Calder, from Team Venom Media. Um, we spoke to you a few months ago, just after you'd won the label title. And uh, you were on about cementing your legacy and who you were planning on defending against. And obviously that didn't end in the way that you would have liked it to end. Um, what's your plans now that you haven't got that belt? <clears throat> I mean, you know, I, as I said earlier, I've got the tag team title case. We'll see where that leads me. And uh, other than that, it's just the same thing you said from the beginning. It's still further cementing the legacy of Eli Drake. And uh, at this point, uh, that means that maybe I maybe I transcend impact. Maybe maybe I uh, make impact and take impact to greater heights. Uh, really, that's that's my um, that, that's my goal at this point. So, you know, you can see our, our audience numbers have grown a little bit here and there, and uh, uh, things like that seem to be picking up. So, at this point, it's just continuing that momentum uh, and eventually getting back to that world title. You know, we have an email question from Jerry who asked, "Who is the dumbest dummy?" you've ever met? Well, I'm going to say it's Jerry, because he didn't have the decency to show up. He sent me an email. Tell me. Uh, so, Eli, with the Lucha Underground and Impact show coming up, which Lucha Underground superstar would you like to kiss? Wait, I'm sorry. You're going to have to say that one more time. Um, uh, with the Impact versus Lucha Underground show coming up, uh, which Lucha Underground superstar would you like to kiss? Ah, oh, man, you know, I don't know. You look around that place, and uh, there's a lot of talent to pick up, a lot of talent to go for. Uh, of course, uh, one of the crossover guys, you got uh, Johnny Impact, Johnny Mundo. I've, I've been there, done that. Um, there's a the potential Brian Cage. There's a lot of history there between he and I. Um, hell, man, even I, I look at uh, Pentagon. That, that, that's a good choice, but he's already taken, so... I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see exactly what happens and, and what uh, what all comes to pass on Friday night. Who else? What do you got? Hey, Eli. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com here. Uh, Impact Wrestling has had a bit of a different format of late. They film things at different promotions across the independent circuit. Uh, what do you make of that? It's it's a lot different from anything else we see on TV these days. It is, very much so. Uh, I think it's a great move in the sense to uh, <clears throat> bring the business as a whole together, uh, in a sense, because you got all these little promotions that are kind of floundering and, and things like that, and, and, and we, we get strength and unity, I guess, in a sense. Uh, at the same time, uh, the only the only knock I could say at it is, is some of these smaller promotions don't have the greatest production. Uh, so sometimes it, it doesn't look as crisp as it could, whether it be lighting or cameras or whatever. Uh, so that would really be my only knock to the whole thing. But other than that, I think the concept is a uh, – I, I think it's a phenomenal idea. I th uh, and, and, again, helping everybody to move um, – yeah, helping everybody to work together, and it also gets a lot of guys, guys and girls, opportunities that they might not have had otherwise. Because a lot of times you're getting these local guys at these shows who uh, get to work with the the current Impact talent, and who knows, they might end up on the radar. Thank you. 
Hi, Eli. It's Lee Med from Live Radio in uh, Scotland. Thanks for taking the time ahead of what is going to be a, a busy, busy week with evidence going on. Uh, one of the things I'm really looking forward to is the, uh, the, the workout you're going to be doing on Friday morning on, on Twitch. As somebody who is not in the best of physical condition just now, but has is, is decided now that we've came to the end of Lent and everything else, now is the time to actually get going and get my body into a summer fitness shape. Uh, what kind of tips could you give somebody like me to get that Eli Drake body? Well, at least somebody's looking forward to the damn thing because uh, I never... <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a midday guy myself, but uh, I guess it's the only time that we can fit the thing in, so we're fitting. Uh, so I'm going to get up and work out at 8 a.m. But uh, you know, here's here's the key to everything, and, and a lot of people make the mistake when they go to the gym. They spend two hours, they spend three hours in the gym, and you're wasting your time when you do that. Intensity yields results. You're better off with a super intense 30 minute workout than you are with a moderately intense two hour, uh, two hour workout for the most part. So. The bottom line is you get in there, you don't waste time, you go hard, uh, and then you got to eat like an athlete, which means, you know, I'm, I'm packing away about 4,600 calories a day. And it's, uh, let's see, every day I'm having about three pounds of meat, seven eggs, a lot of veggies, there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of fruits, uh, there's a lot of good healthy fats in there. So, uh, you, you know, you really have to eat like a tank and then work out like an animal. So, Pretty much how it goes. All right, cheers. I look forward to the workout. Cheers, Eli. For sure. Hi, Eli. It's Oliver Newman here from Broken Book Glorious Wrestling Podcast. How you doing? And I just wanted to ask, uh, who's your favourite wrestler of all time? Eli, are you there? The sound of silence. Hello, Eli. I'm right here. Did you hear the question? No, I heard the silence there for a minute. Oh, sorry, I'll start again. Um, I'm Oliver Newman. I'm from Broken But Glorious Wrestling Podcast. How are you doing today, Eli? What's up, man? I'm doing all right. Just over here chilling. Uh Oh, absolutely. Um, I just wanted to know who's your favorite all-time wrestler. You know, I, I don't think I could narrow it down to a favorite. I have a top three. I give you my, my, Mount, my Mount Rushmore, if you will. My top three is easily Hogan, Rock, and Austin. No question about it. Those are my guys. Great choices. Thank you very much. Sure. You know, we got an emailed question from Susie. She wants to know, what did you think of... Uh, the Sammy Callahan, Eddie Edwards situation, and particularly Sammy's uh, showing no remorse for what happened. Well, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> the whole situation was kind of stupid. Uh, the setup was stupid. Execution was stupid. Um, but uh, if he showed no remorse, I mean, I guess own your actions, right? Um, but at the same time, uh, I, I don't know. Um, do what you got to do to to get yourself ahead, um, but you know. Next, hey Eli, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful dot com again. There has this partnership between Impact and Lucha Underground this weekend. I mean, would not have happened a few years ago. There were even issues between Impact and Lucha Underground. What do you think that says about Impact's willingness to try different things? Well, I, I think it's not just a credit to Impact, but a credit to Lucha Underground. It's a credit to the business because uh, there's so many uh, soft egos in this business to the point where people don't want to work together. People don't want to, uh, uh, you know, kind of put the pride aside. And, they had pretty strict uh, contracts, too, if I recall, prior to this. Uh, yeah, to, to a decent degree. But, I mean, you know, if you look at it now, we've got a lot of guys crossing over. So, yeah. So with that all, with that whole crossover, obviously there's flexibility on both sides. So uh, to that point, I think it's great for the talent. I think it's great for the business, and I think it's great for probably both of the companies because now you're getting cross promotion. Thank you.
Hi, Eli. It's Lee again from uh, from Live Radio in Scotland. Obviously, one of the great things about Impact is the fact that uh, you and the other superstars are so interactive when it comes to social media. I have to ask, uh, how has the uh, the drumming been going since your recent uh, return to the the kit? <laughs> Well, actually, that, that was pretty much about it. I, uh, they asked me if I would ever want to come and do it again, and, and I might at some point, but uh, I, I played that one show, and, and so far that's it. But who knows? If I see a drum set somewhere and it's open, I might jump in there. Well, I was say, you strike me much more as a, as, as a front man, as a lead man, as somebody that's tucked away in the back. You're goddamn right. That's the truth. Is there a go-to track? Is there a go-to song for Eli Drake to get the I to get the know. night going? Well, maybe I go the Phil Collins route and I play the drums then. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Cracking. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Seven. Hi, Eli. Adam from the Impact Lounge again. Um, I heard you say to the Broken Book Glorious podcast there, you're Mount Rushmore of favorite wrestlers. But as a talker, as uh, one of the top talkers in the game today, what's your favorite promo of all time? Is it uh, something like Dusty's uh, Common Man one or, or something else? Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, favorite of all time. Um, Man, I, I, I could go for a few different ones on that. I mean, of course, you know, the Austin 316 promo is a classic. Obviously, as you mentioned, the Dusty promo is a classic. But that was that was slightly a little bit before my time. Um, I mean, any of the Flair promos from, like, the 80s. Hell, man, even the Flair, the Flair promos from the Monday Night Wars, and they were in WCW Monday Nitro, when he'd come out there with Mean Gene, that stuff was off the hook. But there is one rock promo that really stands out in my mind, and it was the very first... Um, the very first Raw of the year 2000, and they were in Miami, and the way that he had controlled and held that crowd in the palm of his hand, and just with with, with the right with, with just the right word or the right look, he could get the people to just start chanting whatever it was that he wanted. And to me, that's amazing, and to have that control over the crowd. Is, is second or not? Is that something that you model yourself on when you think of that promo when you do your stuff? It, do, do you kind of try and emulate I mean, that? I mean, again, like I said, my my, my, my promo, uh, my promo. I guess basically the, the guys that I model myself after for my promos would be there is some Austin, some Rocks, and Jake the Snake in there. So, so for sure, I, I don't know that I'm ever thinking about that promo in particular. But I think just as those, just the way that those guys present themselves, because they pre- they present themselves so larger than life, they present themselves with such confidence that, to the point where I don't even think confidence tells what they're presenting enough. Like it's it's so big and so sure of themselves, and that's exactly what I try to come across. As. Thanks, Eli. Enjoy your. New- Eli, we got an email question from Byron. He wants to know where did the Fact of life catchphrase come from? <laughs> well, that's a secret, Byron. Uh, I can't tell you that. Uh, I, no, I, I tell you what it was. I was just uh, I was listening to a radio show. I want to say back in like probably 2010. Uh, cause I've been saying that's not an insult to fact of life since about 2010, actually, on the Indies and everything. Uh, so it was basically I was I was listening to a radio show. These guys were kind of going back and forth. The one guy said that you know, he insulted him, and then the other guy insulted the other guy, and he was like, it's not an insult, it's just a fact of life. And I was like, oh, that's that's a pretty good go-home line. Uh, so I pretty much just uh, I kind of kept it, uh, thought about it, used it a couple times, and it kind of stuck. And uh, now the people sometimes finish it for me when I go to different shows. So I dig it. Hi, uh, Dave from Team, Team Venom Media. Um, one of the things I find disheartening about um, spoilers on the internet, do you think taping impact so far in advance harms impact wrestling? Uh, yes and no. I mean, uh, if, if you're not looking for it, I, I don't think it finds you most of the time. I mean, unless, of course, you're, you're reading a lot of people's social media posts and comments and stuff like that. Because, of course, there are trolls out there all the time who are going to do that stuff. Um, I, would it be 
better to go live? Hell yeah. I just don't think that's a reality at this point. It would be better if we could do uh, more frequent tapings. But again, it, there is also a, a cost that goes along with that. At the same time, taping wrestling shows ahead of time for TV isn't anything new. I mean, that's that, that was the case back in the 80s. It was in the 90s. Uh, really, doing live wrestling TV wasn't even a thing until Monday Nitro. So uh, it's it's got a part for the course, but I, I do get what you're, say, what you're saying because now with the Internet, everything's so instant. You get all the information. So it would definitely be to our benefit to tape more frequently when that's something we can do financially. Okay, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, and look forward to seeing you at WrestleMania Comet in the UK. Hell yeah, I'm ready to go. Hi, Eli. Bro, it's Gary with Wrestling Inc. again. Uh, just kind of going back to your promos and everything, and just <clears throat> how much you've, you've, you've worked on your promos and, and your character development. Uh, what are your thoughts on promos and character development today? Because it seems to be um, not a lost art, but kind of a, a dying art. It's lacking, and it's lacking because guys are getting lost in what's actually important, and uh, guys are trying to do cool moves over telling good stories, and the bottom line of what we do is entertainment. At the end of the day, that's exactly what this is. It's what it's always been. It's never been anything different. But guys are getting in all these comic book moves, which are cool, and they have a place. Uh, but at some point, you've got to tell me who you are, and you've got to be able to tell a story. The people aren't tuning – okay, so you got your really hardcore wrestling fans. They're going to tune in, and they're going to be like, oh, that was a really cool move, and that was great, da 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 But let's say somebody hasn't checked out wrestling since 1998, 1999, when it was really peaking, and there were, like, everybody. Like, people – when I was in high school – there were kids I knew who did not watch wrestling, who all of a sudden, 1998, 1999, suddenly they were talking about it every week and they were watching it. Now, how do you recapture those people? Not with cool moves, because every, move, every, every week when they came in, they were talking about the funny stuff that they saw, the, but not like just funny stuff, but like the really good character stuff that they saw. So it, it's, it's a matter of entertaining the people. The moves are almost secondary. It's really, who are you? What are you doing and how are you doing it? Um, and, and being able to have a character on top of that. If you look back, I was just watching an old Raw the other night, and uh, D'Lo Brown was not known for his promos. But D'Lo Brown cuts a better promo than probably 90% of the guys in wrestling today. And that's a sad state of affairs uh, because a, a lot of these guys just they, they don't, think that they need to do that. They're thinking if I do a bunch of moves, super juniors crap and flippy flop, whatever. Um, and, and again, it's got a place and it's cool. But at the end of the day, that's not what's going to bring in that casual audience. Because if these people who used to watch wrestling, who don't watch anymore, they're flipping through the channels. If they see that, that's not going to keep them. But if they see something, a segment like, uh, this is your life with the rock, or if they see a Ric Flair on the TV, uh, telling you about his gators, or they see Steve Austin, because see, people remember quotes, they remember moments, they don't remember moves, and that's that, that's what's lost. And do you think there are other wrestlers today that are uh, that are nailing it as far as uh, their characters and their promos as well, or or not uh, really? I mean, there there are a few here and there. I mean, I, I don't again, like I like I told the other guy, I pretty much got blinders on. I almost don't watch anything anymore except old stuff. Um, I, I don't watch much of what else is going on in the rest of the business. Um, but I have seen a little bit of Braun Strowman, not to put over the other company, but uh, I, I knew that guy. We started together over at WWE, and uh, I, I didn't know if he was going to be able to do much or loosen up, but, man, he's really taken the reins and gotten really good. And, and hell, that, that's a guy actually down the road I'd like to work with, if I'm honest. Thank you. Hi, Eli, Josh from Bolt Town again. Uh, you mentioned uh, about moments uh, in the last question. Uh, to go on that, if you could have a moment with any wrestler active or past, who would it be and uh, why? Uh, man, see, now you got me tossing up because it, it, would, it would definitely be 
one of those three guys. And, and I don't think that I yeah. can it down because those moments would be so huge, but at the same time, so, so different. Because uh, I feel mm. like a moment with Austin would be completely different than it would be with Hogan. I feel like a moment with Hogan would be completely different than it would be with The Rock. Um, but those would be my guys. Uh, because, man, when I was a little kid, Hogan was the deal. And even when he went to the NWO, to be able to go from uh, being the biggest babyface of all time to now you're the biggest heel and being successful at it in the NWO is amazing. And, and that speaks a true testament to his character and his larger than life personality and his ability. Yeah. Uh, say what you want about what he does in the ring, but the guy's an amazing performer. He's got crazy charisma. And I guess also just physically, he's larger than life. So, but at the same time, I, I think the promos uh, between Rock and myself or Austin and myself would be goddamn amazing. Uh, That'd be so that much fun. Some, yeah, and I, and I think that we could do some awesome <laughs> business in the ring because, again, they didn't do really super flashy moves, but they had amazing psychology of what they were doing and they had amazing snap and commitment to every single move that they did in the ring mm. brilliant thank you you know we have an email question from phil's lover he wants to know would uh, would you ever get involved in politics <laughs> yeah i thought about that actually um i, I don't know if i can answer that question yet i I think maybe somewhere down the road. I mean, I would normally say there are too many skeletons in my closet, but it seems like with the uh, era of Donald Trump, that stuff doesn't really matter too much anymore. Uh, I'm really not sure. Um, I guess we'll see in a few years. It's something to consider. Hi, Eli. This is Roger Gary again with Wrestling Inc. I just had a a quick... Uh, not much. I just had a quick question regarding uh, your partnership with Chris Adonis. You guys had a, a cool thing going, and then he kind of abruptly left. What were your thoughts on how he left, and have you spoken to him since? Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't too happy about it. Everybody's got the reasons for whatever they're doing. Uh, it kind of hit me. It was shocked. as a surprise. Um, <clears throat> I've, I've only spoken to him here and there, honestly, since then, but... Uh, uh, for the most part, I, I wish he would have stayed. I, I think we had something pretty good. At the same time, I can kind of get where he was coming from. And kind of with that, what's it like to be working with Scott Steiner at the upcoming Redemption pay-per-view? I don't know what you're talking about. You're getting ahead of yourself. Spoilers. <laughs> oh, my. my bad. I'm oh, sorry about that. Hi, Eli. This is Alan Wu from the sportscourier.com. I got buddies from the site who say that you were on uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine several years ago. How do you like your chances of getting back on TV, and uh, how did you enjoy the experience of taping for them at Brooklyn Nine-Nine? It was amazing. I mean, the only sad thing is uh, if, if you blink, you miss me because it was really quick. Uh, but because when I came in, uh, you know, I, they, they gave me an actual role. I had a name. There was like actually a decent little segment that we taped and, and they ended up using, you know, maybe two seconds of it. Uh, but it was a really cool experience. Terry Crews was amazing. He was a lot of fun, uh, uh, for that little bit that we were there. Uh, and it was an all around great experience. My plan is to continue with that. Unfortunately, lately I've been a little bit, uh, slackish, I guess you could say, as far as, uh, getting my stuff out to different agents and whatnot. Mm. Understood. All the best of luck, Dave. Thanks. Of course. Thank you. Hi, Eli. It's Oliver Newman here from Broken But Glorious Wrestling Podcast again. What's up, man? And I just wanted to know, who are your top five dummies in professional wrestling? Top five what? Dummies. Wait a minute. What? Top five? What? He wants to know your top five dummies. Dummies, dude. Goddamn. Man, I, I, I should go down the line right now because uh, I'm, I'm in a hell of a mood today, so I can tell you all kinds of guys. Uh, <laughs> uh, l- let me just say, uh, I'm going to go ahead and name it down. We're, we're going to go uh, Austin Aries. Yeah. We're going to go Alberto El Patron, yeah, Johnny Impact, right? And uh, I see this new goof running around, Brian Cage. 
And uh, who else are we looking at? Uh, I'm going to say Ross Foreman. How about that? (laughs) Just remember, Eli. Thanks very much. Eli, it was Josh Matthews who said, yeah, put Eli in the the 7 a.m. workout. You didn't have that with me. (laughs) (laughs) These people think I'm a morning person. This is bullshit. I mean, oops. Yeah, um, let's see again. So, uh, I wanted to ask you, uh, like, who would you choose as your tag team partner uh, to cash in on the tag team opportunities? <clears throat> well, it's, it's a couple weeks away. Uh, we got to figure out what's going on with that and uh, who's available, who wants to jump in. Um, of course, you never know what kind of surprises might show up. You talked about Brian Cage and your history. You were tag team partners before. Could we see a uh, reuniting? We'll see what? Could we see you guys reuniting? Uh, man, I, I don't know, man. You know, he, he's kind of on his own path right now. I mean, anything's possible. Never say never. Uh, but, yeah, that'd be a blast from the past for sure because we had a good, probably solid two years together where we were just uh, dominating the West Coast scene for sure. Eli, we're going to head over to Zachary Yoon, who has an emailed question. He wants to know, what has been your favorite match of your career? Hmm. Favorite match of my career? Well, I mean, uh, the, the easy one to pick is uh, is um, the gauntlet for the gold, uh, where I won the, the world title. Um, I mean, for obvious reasons. It, it, was, it was a crazy match considering that I was coming in number one, I guess you could technically say number two. Uh, but at the beginning of the day, when, you know, when, when the bell rang, I was the guy who was in there. And uh, when the bell rang again to end the match, I was the guy who was there holding that title up. So uh, it was an amazing time. You're talking about 60 minutes going from end to end uh, and me having my hand raised at the end of the day. So that's definitely my favorite match. All righty, Eli. I appreciate your time very much. Media, thank you very much. Eli, you got a, a huge weekend coming up. Uh, I'll give you the, the floor for your final thought. Damn right, I got a huge day. Here we are, a huge weekend, huge day. We got the whole thing here. So here's the deal, man. New Orleans coming this weekend. We got a big old thing, WrestleCon. We got Impact versus Lucha. And there's only one guy you got to worry about, and that's Eli Drake, because. Coming from there, then we got the tapings in Orlando in just a couple weeks, and anything possibly can happen. So I'll tell you what, keep your eyes peeled, stay tuned in, make sure you follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, at the Eli Drake, and uh, plenty of good and big things to come from this guy, that's for sure. All righty, Eli, appreciate your time very much. Media, we appreciate everything. You've given us great coverage this week and look forward to continued coverage over the next few days. We will talk to you next week. Thank you, dummies. Davey Richards, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And a hero, too. (laughs) This is the dog of war, Jesse Neal, and we're with Andre Corville. That looks okay. I'm sorry, guys. Wrestling, honor, tradition. Because we're all in this for one big wrestling.